confidence. You're choosing to sing it, but you maybe don't know that as a testimony yet. Either way, we're going to sing this about our God, and we're going to believe that something takes place when Christians, whether singing in faith or from faith, something takes place, because that spirit that brings freedom is residing in each one of us if we are in Christ. And when we sing the nature and the character of our God, when we sing the integrity, His faithfulness, His track record, something takes place. And I will sing over my soul this morning. I'll sing it from faith and I'll sing it in faith that He is sure in the storm. He is fixed in the flood. He's never run. He has never left you. He has never left you. I just prophesy over you, He'll never leave you. And He has never left you. I comfort you this morning by the Spirit of God that He has never left and He will never leave. He will never leave. He will always be who He's been. He will always be who He's been. He's faithful. He's faithful. His testimony, His testimony, my testimony is the faithfulness of Jesus. It's the faithfulness of Jesus. I come against anything that would ever try to say that he is not faithful, that he's not sure in this storm, that he's not fixed in this flood. Just begin to lift up your praise. We're going to declare this. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. You've never left. You're sure in the storm, fixed in the flood. You will ever run, cause that's who you are. You're there through it all, my God is here with us. 
could have done that before he went to the cross. He didn't run away from the cross. In fact, the Bible says he could have called legions of angels. Could have walked away from it all. When push came to shove, he could have said, I'm out of here. I don't need this. But he gave his life as a ransom for many. He shed his blood. He died. He really died. And he really rose again. And we stand in that victory today. We're getting ready to celebrate what he's done for us. And on this Independence Weekend, we declare our dependence on him. If you don't have the communion elements, just lift your hands. Our ushers will get them to you real quickly. You should have got those as you came in today. Go ahead and peel back that top layer, reveal the bread. It's a wafer. And Jesus said, as long as you do this, you remember what I've done for you. Every time you eat bread, every time you, you drink of, of the juice that has been crushed to let out the flavor, he said, remember, remember what I've done. Remember the sacrifice I've made. Remember the cost. But also don't just remember what it costs. Remember what you're able to stand in because of what he paid. Remember your freedom. Remember you're free from sin. Remember you've been forgiven. Remember you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. Remember what you can step into. Remember the victory that's been won for you. Don't just take a quick bite and drink a little juice and say, oh, that was nice. No, no, no. This isn't a snack. Okay? We're not here to take a snack today. We're here to remember what Jesus has bought and paid for. And we freely stand in that today. What an awesome God. So take the bread. Let's eat together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Awesome, God. And then peel back that next layer. You'll find the juice. Grapes have to be crushed. bring refreshment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your broken body. Thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Thank you that on this Freedom Weekend, we can stand in the true freedom, freedom in the cross, freedom in the blood of Jesus, freedom in the broken body of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much that you gave of yourself freely so that we might have life and life more abundantly. Hallelujah. We celebrate and we remember all that you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's thank him as we drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, oh, we love you, Lord, we love you, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill the room, oh, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room, fill the room. Oh, we love you, Lord. Come on, let's worship him together. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Thank you. 
fill the room, fill the room, fill the room. Every time and 
it again in all our praise and adoration from every tribe and every nation we lift you high we glorify in all our praise and adoration from every tribe and every nation we lift you of you watching online, lift your hands or your voice in your house today, wherever you are. Be glorified, Lord. All our praise and adoration. Every tribe and every nation. Be glorified. Lift you high. You're worthy, Lord. None like you, Jesus. There's none like you, Jesus. There's none like you, Jesus. Whatever you need from him today, receive it. Just reach out and receive it around his throne. Things are freely given around his throne. As you worship him, as you seek his face, all our praise and adoration Every tribe and every nation, we lift you high, Lord. We glorify all our praise and adoration. Every tribe, every nation, we lift you high. Be glorified. his throne you can leave all your stuff just leave it there leave the fear, leave the worry, leave it leave it, just drop it off say here Jesus you take care of this Uh, all my mess all my issues Lord you take care of it I, I give it to you I give it to you This isn't probably theologically correct, but I just had this mental picture of around the throne, there's this this vacuum. You ever see those house vacuums that you just kind of you turn it on and you, you kick it in and it goes, and it's gone. Here you go, Jesus. <laughs> gone. <laughs> I want one of those vacuums in my house someday. I know we're not going to get it, but I want one. I'm going to get one of my new mansion in heaven. Yeah. Come on, just thank him today. This right here is one of the reasons why 
Word of God says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Because something happens in corporate worship. And I know there are governors trying to ban singing and they don't want churches to sing. The issue is it's a command from God. We don't break God's commands. There's a lot of things I could say, but I won't. Um, I, I just, I fear God more than I fear man. I, I love God more than I love the, the approval of man or the... Uh, this church will always be about God and not about man. some things I need to share today. Let me just say thank you for those of you who have continued to give. Uh, If you came today to give, the boxes on the wall right by the exit doors are there for you to put your offering in. Or you can mail your offering in by snail mail. You can give online on our website. You can text to give, text 84321. Give any amount. I think you can actually even give a million dollars if you'd like. I think it's possible. Also, you can give by the Church Center app. And as you give, you're obeying God, but you're also blessing this house, keeping us able to do ministry I'm, I'm excited about what's happening next door. Um, if, if you've not been a part of that, you can still just mark your giving first fruits or building. Um, I think we need around $60,000 yet to uh, be able to pay for everything. Why does the back wall say Christy Hollis Pastor? Did I, did I get voted out? <laughs> Just curious. I, I know she's a better preacher than I am, but. Hey, uh, good, good things happened this, this past week and a half, two weeks. Uh, the, so the gymnasium, the sports center is, is coming together. And the sensory classroom for our special needs kids is happening. And a new classroom for our our five-year-olds is happening. And we were able to gain enough space for a broadcast room for our online ministry. We're really excited about that. And the nursing mothers are excited because they're going to get their room back eventually. Yeah. But uh, all all the electrical lines have been run and lights are in there. The lights are impressive. I'm just saying. Uh, the electricians, they they just been working overtime. Can I say thank you to Eric Ward and Dave Devano and, and Matt Ruos? Would you guys, would you stand? Matt, would you stand? I don't know if Eric's here. Is Eric here? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. These guys are killing it. And uh, it's it's just amazing to have such gifts in the house. Um, Matt Doughton is kind of doing a little bit of the work. This guy, if we didn't have Matt and his team, we'd, we'd be paying a lot of money. But God has blessed us with, with such a gift, uh, your gift to this house. <laughs> Thank you. Mike Devano. He built all those walls over there. I, I'm amazed at, at the skills of all the guys in this church. They, they blow my mind. Um, 
Mike's done this for how many years? 50 years? 40. Sorry, I put you a little older than you were. I figured you started when you were a teenager. I don't know. But uh, what, a, what a gift, what a blessing. Amen. And uh, continue your giving. Uh, the Cat 6 got run this last week and, and insulation. Even our uh, pastoral team, they were working on insulation this week. They're not bad. I'm, I'm telling you, these guys, they, they uh, all you got to do is tell them what to do. And they all pretty much do that except Isaiah. <laughs> but thank you for your giving. We will continue to move forward as God directs and leads us and allows us to. And as long as you're faithful. Someone said during these uncertain times, the only thing that could be worse is if the murder hornets are attracted to hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, last night, uh, our dogs, they don't like fireworks. Probably your dogs don't either, if you have dogs. But Sullivan is, is an 85-pound chow, and everybody's afraid of him but he jumped up on our bed and he doesn't jump on the bed anymore because he's just not physically able but he got physically able last night he jumped on the bed came and laid on me and then laid on my head I'm like dude I don't know what you want but I can't help you like that okay but yeah it was crazy and, and I, was, I was thinking about one summer evening during a violent thunderstorm, a mother was tucking her small boy into bed. She was about to turn off the light when he asked with a tremor in his voice, Mommy, will you sleep with me tonight? The mother smiled and gave him a reassuring hug. She said, I can't, dear. I have to sleep with Daddy. There was a long silence, but broken by his little shaky voice, he said, the big sissy. So I hope you'll stay to the end of the service because uh, we're going to end with a rattle today. Today we kick off a new series entitled Joshua 2020. Joshua 2020. It's the year 2020, but it's also God gives us 2020 vision through his word as we look at what Joshua faced and what really we face as children of God. Joshua 1, verse 1. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant. And can I just say to you, if you really want to lead someday in any form, you've got to serve. Because you don't know how to lead until you've served. You'll never gain the necessary knowledge and ability and understanding to know what it's like to lead unless you serve. Because it's in the serving that you learn how to lead. I, I've been many places in my life and I've served everywhere I've been. In many places, I learned what to do, and I also learned what not to do. I learned how to treat people and how not to treat people. I learned some things that, that I couldn't have learned had I begun in leadership. It came up about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. Moses even served. The Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Somebody say, arise. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you. Just as I spoke to Moses, 
from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the, great, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then, somebody say then, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I wrote a song out of that passage. I don't know if you remember it or not. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. Anyway, um, for the Lord your God, he goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Uh-huh. So, as I'm reading Joshua chapter 1, it was after Moses died that God spoke to Joshua. And I thought, you know, you can sit around and mourn the death of someone or something the rest of your life. Or you can get up and move on to your inheritance. Yesterday we were sitting around and, and uh, Allie said, you realize a year ago, Uncle Doug was here in our pool swimming. We're like, oh, wow. Who knew it was going to be the last 4th of July we would spend together? And one of the last times we would see him physically. And, and a heaviness comes over you and you can, you can stay in that heaviness when you think about the loss. I, I, I'm willing to say 2020 has killed a lot of dreams. There's a lot of things that have died in 2020. I think back to our, our planning sessions we had as we moved into 2020 and all the things we planned for this year. How most of those plans have just gone out the window. They're, they're dead. They're gone. They're not going to be resurrected. And you can sit and mourn over things that have died, over something that's died, over someone that's died. Or you can arise, get up, cross the Jordan into your inheritance. And I believe God is calling us as his people not to sit down, not to say, oh, I guess we'll never, but to say, hey, now's the time. It's time to move forward. Arise. Don't stay there. Arise. Get up, cross the Jordan River into all that God has for you. God's desire for Israel was, number one, listen to him. Get your strategy, your battle plan from him. Number two, obey what he says. Listen, obey. And number three, walk in victory. Win the battles. You can't win without a fight. You can't win a battle without a fight. God never said there's not going to be a fight. He said, fight the good fight. He said, I'll be with you. Don't be afraid. Be strong. Be courageous. Realize I'm with you. You can't win without a fight. Jeremy Courtney says, do it scared. 
It's okay. You may be scared. Go ahead, do it scared. Take, take a step toward whatever scares you the most. Just go ahead and step in. Fear doesn't have to be in the driver's seat. Fear will probably always be with you. But fear is an option. Take fear out of the driver's seat, put them in the passenger seat. So you can come along, but you can't say anything. Sit there and shut up. I, my parents have dementia, and I, I heard for the first time this past week, my mom tell my dad to shut up. We were never allowed to say that growing up. It just wasn't words that we used in our house. And I looked at her like, what did you just say to dad? We were there. My niece got married on Sunday and uh, Christy and I came in to help my sisters concentrate on the wedding. So we took care of mom and dad. And uh, very interesting to see where they're at in their life. Still love Jesus. They do love one another. If you're watching today, I know you love one another. Um, but yeah, fear. Move it to the passenger seat. Say, shut up. You can't, you can't talk. You're not allowed to say anything. You don't rule here. Only Jesus rules here. And that's why, that's why the Lord commanded Joshua, be strong and very courageous. I command you. Be strong and very courageous. He wouldn't command anything that we couldn't do. So he commands us with his command. There's authority in that. At verse 3, I want you to notice uh, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 3, the whole land was given to them. He said, every place the sole of your foot treads, I, I've given to you. It was given to them, but they could only possess the portion that they claimed. You got to step. You, you got to take a step. I'm just thinking, you know, the opportunity for the sports center was, was there, but we had to take a step and say, we're going to claim that as ours. And then, then we had to come to you and say, hey, we've taken a step. Will you step with us? Let, let's go. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. And so every step we take, God is giving us ground. He's giving us territory. He said, you've got to claim what I've given you. And some of us sit around and we know what God has given us, but we're not claiming it. We're not taking the step into it. Step towards it. Full blessing in the Christian life is given to eager, hungry people who press in to receive it with a high level of expectancy. Also remember that doubt and disobedience wiped out an entire generation. Only Joshua and Caleb from that generation walked into victory and moved into the promised land. They saw with God eyes. Yeah, the people are big, but God's bigger. Yeah, there's, there are giants in the land, but our God is able. They, circumstances look insurmountable, but our God is able. Our God is bigger. Remember, we live from heaven to earth. We have positional victory. We don't work up toward victory. We work down from victory. We stand in victory because of the cross and the empty tomb. So you got to ask yourself, where are you living? Am, am I sitting on the other side of the Jordan saying, I don't know, I don't know if we'll ever. Let me remind you what Ephesians chapter 1 says, verse 18. Paul the apostle writing to the church at Ephesus says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand 
in the heavenly places. Far above. Somebody say far above. Far above all. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things. He put all things. Somebody say all things. He put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And you, church, you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. We're seeing that spirit run rampant right now. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our transgressions. He made us alive together with Christ. Parentheses, he says, remember this, by grace you've been saved. This isn't something you've done. It's not because you're good enough. It's by his grace. Verse six, and he raised us us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So where are you sitting? Where's Jesus sitting? At the right hand of the Father in a position of authority, name above all names. Everything is subjected to his Authority, everything is under his feet, and you and I are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So you got to recognize where you are, who you are. You got to get God's eye, you got to get his vision, his 2020 vision, as we live from heaven to earth. We have positional victory. We don't work up toward victory, but we work down from it. We stand in victory because of where Jesus is standing. We sit in victory because of where Jesus is sitting. Are you with me today? So God says, arise. Look at your neighbor and tell him, arise. Arise. It's time to get up. It's time to move toward that which scares you the most. It's time to arise and move across the Jordan into the promised land. Cross over into the land of victory, the land of promise. And remember, be strong and courageous. 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 Don't be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. It's yours for the taking, he says, because I've given it to you. Do everything I say. It'll make you prosperous and successful. Don't be afraid because I am with you. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers. We've been given authority. We've been given the keys of the kingdom to bind and to loose. Don't give Satan territory in your life by default. Wrestle, fight, win. Fight the good fight. You can sit around and mourn the death of someone or something the rest of your life, or you can get up and move into your inheritance. Don't stay there. Even though the dream has died, get up, start walking, 
Every place you walk is yours. The prophet Isaiah said, when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Death can bring new life. I remember when I stood at my grandfather's grave. I'd stood at his casket. And my grandfather was a man who had great influence in my life. And I stood there and I said, God, I want some of what grandpa had. Here am I, send me. It's what Isaiah prayed. God said, who shall I send? He said, I'll go. Here am I, send me. And I don't know what's died in your life, but maybe you need to look and see the Lord in this. Say, here am I, send me. I'll go, I'll do what you want me to do. So, well, it's, it's been so tough. Stretching south for hundreds of miles from Glacier National Park lies a majestic mixture of valleys, rushing streams, and gargantuan mountains called the Bob Marshall Wilderness. The Bob Marshall Wilderness hosts some 90,000 packers and hikers each year, and most of them in the months of July and August. They have to come in either by foot or by horseback because no motorized vehicles are allowed. The forests on those rugged mountain slopes are thick with lodgepole pine. It's a tough, hardy tree with cones so thick that only extreme heat can burst forth the seeds. And that's where fire comes in. For thousands of years, lightning has cracked the big sky out there down to the forest below, and often the lightning will hit the Douglas firs, which are less rugged than the lodgepole pines, and the forest fire will begin. For years, of course, the United States Forest Service fought furiously to put out these fires. More recently, they've adopted a pol policy of managed fires. They've learned that these fires have a purpose. Look at your neighbor and tell them, these fires have a purpose. Th this isn't just happenstance. What you're going through has a purpose. It, it may look awful. It may seem like everything's burning down, but there's a purpose. They've learned that these fires have a purpose. Without them, the seeds of the lodgepole pines are never released. Without the fires, much of the underbrush and plant life does not regenerate. The earth needs a fire cast on it or it will die. And you can curse the fire or you can receive its releasing, purifying work and say, Lord, what do you want to do in my life through this fire? I mean, there's all kinds of fires around us right now, and there's all kinds of things going on, and we can say, oh, I hate this fire. I hate COVID. I hate what the, I hate it all. Or you can say, God, what do you want to do through this? What, what do you want to release? Lord, release seeds of greatness out of this fire. Lord, release new possibilities out of this fire. Release some seeds of, of things I never dreamed could even happen out of this fire. Because you can either curse the fire or you can receive the blessing of the fire. On our way home, we drove to Kansas. It's 20, 21, 22 hours. It, it's, 
it's a long ways to Kansas. When people say, you're not in Kansas anymore, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Pretty excited about that. <laughs> On our way back, we came a different way than we went. And it's pretty much wilderness. And yet there's a bunch of trees. You can, you can see everywhere. You can see for miles. But on the way back, I, I mentioned to Christy, I said, look, look at these trees out here. Every tree is bent in the same direction. Very odd to me. When trees are supposed to grow straight and tall, and, and yet every one of them were bent over. I said to her, I said, that's, can you tell which way the wind blows? Because the winds in Kansas are strong. It was always windy when we were there. And every day the wind blows pretty much in one direction and it bends everything in its path. And the thought occurred to me, how many of us are being bent by the winds of this world and not by the wind of the Spirit? What wind is bending you in which direction? I, I'm convinced, I, I, I noticed on this trip that the entire world that I'm, I'm coming in contact with, they're scared to death. They're watching the news and they're scared to death. I, I figured out a, a long time ago, if, if you watch the weather every day and decide what to do because of the weather forecast, you'll never do anything. Because I, I would go outside, I'm like, but they said that, and wow. And if you continue to spend most of your time with the winds of this world, you'll be bent in a certain direction. But God, by his spirit, wants to blow on you, and straighten you up, and get you going in the right direction. He wants to give you a 2020 vision. His, his view, his understanding. We're going to end in a few moments with, with the song Rattle. And if you need a breakthrough in your life, if you need to come out of that grave, I'm going to invite you to come. Just spend some time in God's presence up front here. But before we do that, maybe you'd like to give your life to Jesus Christ today. Make him the Lord of your life and, and start this journey that God has for you, this victorious journey, this this ability to, to live from victory, from heaven to earth, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now, at this point, you may be dead in your trespasses and sins, but God can make you alive together with Christ and give you new life. And all he waits for is your decision to say yes. And if you want to say yes to him today, I want you just to raise your hand up high and say, that's me, I'm in. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Anyone? I don't want to miss anybody. Maybe you're online today. You just raise your hand in your house. Say, I'm in. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand together. Lord, we love you today. We praise you. And we know you're right in the middle of what we're going through. You're here with us. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said, be strong and very courageous because I'm with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. 
And it matters that you're walking with us, Lord. Right in the middle of it, in the mountain, that's where you'll be found. Right in the middle of it, deep in the center of it, that's where you are now. Right in the middle of it, right in the middle of it, that's where you Can you just thank him right now for being with you, for walking with you, for strengthening you, for giving you everything you need? Hey, if you haven't invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life yet, do that right now. Just invite him to be your leader, your Lord. Say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. I want to follow you. I want to obey you. I want to listen to you. today, stop by our connection bar. We have a gift for you. If you gave your heart to Jesus, give us a thumbs up in the comment section. Or if you gave your heart to Jesus in this room today, you say, I want to be a follower of Christ, stop by the connection bar. We've got something for you as well. Now, we're going to come out of the grave. It's time to arise, step into your promised land. You want, a, you want a, some freedom today? I invite you to come and be a part of what's happening here this morning. God bless you. Have a fabulous week. Come on.
Come alive. Arise. Pick up your bed and walk. Let's go. Perhaps the Lord will act on our behalf. Shoot. Make sure you stop at the boxes on the way out and give today. All right? Have a blessed day and live. 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 One more time. One more time. One more time. God said live. God said live. God said live. God said live. And this is what it said. Live. Live. Drop on to the word of the Lord. Live. Live. Drop on to the word of the Lord. Live. Live. Drop
Amen, amen. Be blessed today. We love you and we'll see you again next week. Have a great week. We'll be praying for you. We'll see you again live on Wednesday and Friday. Have a great day. God bless.